Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Christy, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenter at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan forward slash W-A-C-A-C. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Mule Lindbergh College. Thank you, Christy. I will go ahead and get my PowerPoint up. Okay, can I, if I could just get a thumbs up or do you see my presentation in full screen? Okay, great. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. So my name is Anna Marie Fami. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions for the West Coast at Muhlenberg College. Muhlenberg is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. We are a small private liberal arts college. Um, Allentown is about 90 minutes away from New York City. So that's like an hour and a half drive um, or public transportation. There's 12 direct uh, bus routes that go there every day. And we're also, also about 60 miles from Philadelphia. It's so about an hour drive. Um, so you have access to these exciting and vibrant cities from where we are, um, but Allentown itself is also a large city. So we are actually the third largest city in Pennsylvania um, and the fastest growing city as well. Downtown Allentown is full of lots of restaurants, museums, art murals, uh, concert venues. Um, so a lot of exciting downtown stuff in, in, in Allentown. Uh, and Muhlenberg is about a 10 minute drive away from downtown Allentown. We are located in the suburban part of the city, surrounded by tree lined streets, old brick houses. Uh, as a person that is native from California and has lived here my whole life, it was really neat to go there two weeks ago and just see like all the green and just water everywhere and, and, and old brick buildings. It was really cool. Um, and also just a few minutes away from where Muhlenberg is, uh, there's a walking distance to a farmer's market, five minute drive away from an amusement park, uh, and also just a short drive away from your, you know, any suburban necessities, Target, Starbucks, Chipotle, the mall, etc. Um, so really, it's kind of urban and suburban at the same time. And so when I visited Muhlenberg two weeks ago, um, what stood out to me the most uh, were our red doors on campus. So almost every exterior door on campus um, is, is bright red. And so this dates back to our founding and the Lutheran faith. Red doors symbolize a sign of welcome. So Muhlenberg is an incredibly welcoming community. Uh, and even though we are founded as a Lutheran college, we are really proud of our religious diversity today. About a third of our students self-identify as Jewish, but about a fourth, oh, sorry, about a fourth, uh, about a fourth Roman Catholic, about a fourth other Christian denomination, and about a fourth other religions or not religious or just figuring it out. Um, Muhlenberg is also a welcoming place for academic diversity. About 30% of our students double major, it's not uncommon to be, say, a theater and a business double major. Uh, maybe if you're for that business major, you concentrate in arts administration. That's one of our concentrations within business. A lot of students like to do that because it kind of connects back to their theater and performing arts interests. Another common combo is dance and biology. Um, so maybe you're interested in both of those, specifically how, you know, kind of the science side of biology, but it can also connect to movement and the body with dance, something like that. So our students really love the arts and sciences. Uh, our most popular areas of, of interest tend to be in the performing arts for our top rank for our theater program, but we're also known for the sciences. Our medical school acceptance rate is 87%. Uh, and we're known for business as well. As a small liberal arts college, we're proud to have a business program. Our majors in the social sciences are also pretty popular. I want to point out a couple of other uh, new or up and coming programs as well. Public health is something that's gained interest over the last few years, so you can probably imagine why. Uh, sustainability studies is a new major for us. Um, and if you're interested in the environment, but also human relations to the environment, thinking about social justice from an environmental perspective, that might be something that you're interested in. Neuroscience is also becoming more popular. Our minor documentary story making is pretty unique. Uh, and our English major just divided into two programs, English Literatures and English and Creative Writing. So I highlight that just to show you just the range of academic interests uh, that we have at Muhlenberg. 
We also have academic partnerships, for example, like our partnership with UPenn Dental School. And if you have specific questions about academic partnerships and how that works in the application process, feel free to uh, let me know or email me. And outside of the classroom, our students really benefit from the intimate nature of a small residential college. Almost all of our students live on campus. Uh, you have access to many clubs like the nonpartisan club Berg Votes, getting students to vote, or squads, students for career advocacy, various a cappella and other performing art groups, uh, club environmental clubs like the Beekeeping Society are also popular. And when you're not busy with club study abroad as a popular option, you could do semester long programs, say study theater in London or dance in Italy, or even a short term program like studying climate change in Bangladesh. And our students are prepared for life after college, but 87% of our graduates report being employed, attending graduate school or doing some sort of other programs uh, within a year of graduation. One of our alums just started at a PhD program at USC, and she's studying how she was a, she did theater at Muhlenberg, but she's studying how art can be used as a therapy for people with Parkinson's disease. So that kind of connects her neuroscience interests also with her art interests. Or maybe you're more into like business and media. There's an alum a couple of years ago who double majored in both of those, and she now works at NBC Universal as a strategic planning manager. So uh, whatever it is that you may you know, you're interested in, our career center is here to help you to find graduate school programs or career opportunities, things like that. And wherever you decide to go, whatever you decide, just remember that we are here for you. Our admissions process is a holistic one. Uh, we utilize holistic review. Uh, our admissions process, like many of my colleagues here, is student centered. Uh, I am here to answer your questions about the process, whether it's applying, deadlines, affording Muhlenberg. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat or email me uh, afterwards. Thank you. I will go ahead and turn it over to my next colleague. Thank you so much. And now we'll have Salve Regina University. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Christina Berardi, and I'm the Senior Associate Dean of Admissions um, at Salve Regina University, which is located in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, this is a picture of our campus right here, literally on the cliffs of the ocean, um, an area founded by adventurers um, and explorers, um, and certainly something that we're very proud of um, is this beautiful campus um, surrounded by water. Um, so I know many of you are probably also very familiar with the water. Um, we hope that draws you to learn more about Salve. Um, so Salve was founded, um, sorry, Sally was founded in the Catholic liberal arts tradition um, by the Sisters of Mercy, um, and we're really driven by our mission. Um, at Salve's mission is one that really encourages um, the pursuit of learning and also success, but in turn, taking that learning and success and helping to make the world a better place. So right at the end of our mission, you'll see working for a world that's harmonious, just, and merciful. And that social justice initiative is really something that is brought throughout all of our um, academic as well as our co-curricular programming. Um, so the promise we make to our students is realized through this strategic strategic compass that you can see in front of you, um, which includes components like a rigorous education, um, adaptive resiliency, something that we've seen um, be much needed uh, with everyone over the past few years, certainly compassionate mercy leadership, um, helping to develop those leaders that are so in need in today's world, um, and an inclusive community. Um, we are small school, 2,100 undergraduates. Um, we are located in the smallest state of Rhode Island, um, but that makes it very easy to take advantage of opportunities um, as well as get easily to Providence, um, which is uh, our capital of Rhode Island, but also Boston and New York City. So really nicely centrally located, um, but you might never want to leave the Oceanside once you're here. Um, we do have students from all over, um, with the majority of our students coming from out of state in Rhode Island, um, and certainly across the United States and from many nations. 
Um, what is important to us through all of our different areas of study is that we help you build your skill set. Um, and Salve's signature experience is one that helps you do this um, in a very specific sort of four-year um, way where you build upon your credentials each year. Um, and this includes great hands-on learning. So whether you choose to come to Salve for one of our very strong science programs, um, maybe you come for the performing or visual arts arts, potentially business, um, our English programs, administration of justice, or even our most unique program, cultural and historic preservation, you're going to get hands on with your program, um, both inside and outside of the classroom, which is something that's critical to a Salve education and preparing you for your future. 98% um, of Salve Regina graduates um, are either enrolled in graduate school or in their career field within six months of commencement. Um, and 92% of them saying they felt well prepared for that next step in our most recent First Destination survey. Um, so we're incredibly proud of our successful graduates and all they're doing to take their Salve education and really help make the world a better place. Um, so we do apply through the common application. Um, so our, our uh, application deadlines are on here. We are here to help you through the process. Um, we do hope that you'll reach out to us. Um, we are historically a test optional school. Um, we have required testing in the past for a few of our majors, but this year, again, will be fully test optional for all students. Um, so we hope that you take advantage of that um, and apply to Salve. Um, and then also in terms of your investment um, in your future, 99% of our families do receive aid from Salve, a combination of both merit scholarships as well as need-based aid. So helping to make Salve education an even better investment for you um, as you move forward. Um, and one thing to keep in mind at Salve, um, over 90% of our students are completing their degree in four years. Um, unless we do have students who are coming in, applying on the common application to do five-year programs, um, which is also an option where you can get both your undergraduate degree as well as your master's degree um, in that short time with just that one application. Um, so we do encourage you to come visit our campus. Um, it is a beautiful campus. We hope that when you're out on the East Coast, you swing by. Um, but we also encourage you to reach out to your admission counselor directly um, or to me directly. I'll be dropping information in the chat just after my presentation. Um, and um, all students applying from the West Coast are eligible for a fee waiver. So much like those adventurers and explorers I spoke about in the first few minutes, um, we hope you'll also explore Salve, take a risk, um, and check out the East Coast for your future educational options. Thank you very much um, for your time. Thank you. Um, our next presenter will be Sacred Heart University. Thanks, Christy. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Sarah Koloski. I'm the Regional Director of Admissions for Sacred Heart University. I'm actually based in Denver, Colorado. So should you have any questions down the line or find Sacred Heart on your list later on, feel free to contact me with any questions. Um, Sacred Heart is a mid-sized Catholic university. We are located in Fairfield, Connecticut. So we're just an hour and a half outside of New York City and about two and a half hours to Boston. We're on the train line. We're um, close to all major airports. We're 20 minutes from the water. We get the four seasons. So um, we're in this quintessential New England college town. So um, a lot going on, but if you really want to take advantage of urban life, it's not too far away as well. And we're also located in the third most concentrated area of Fortune 500 companies. So those internship opportunities are readily available in our backyard. We're sort of a hybrid of liberal arts meets career education. So our students are mostly coming in undecided, but we do have um, a wealth of opportunities in terms of accelerated or combined graduate programs. Um, as you can see, we have 60 undergraduate uh, programs to choose from, of which 40 of them have a combined or accelerated option. And we see about 40% come back to a Sacred Heart grad program after they finish their time as an undergrad. 
Um, we are top in state, top five in New England for all of our health profession programs. This includes nursing. Um, we have a six year doctorate of physical therapy. We're one of few college campuses to offer that uh, track for students as well as athletic training, occupational therapy. Um, but students are also really interested in business, performing arts, um, cybersecurity, criminal justice, psychology. So there's a lot of different things to get involved in as well. Um, yes, we're a Catholic institution, but we became independent from the church shortly after our founding. We wanted to have full autonomy with the curriculum and let students really dictate what um, they want their relationship to be both as within the faith or on the spiritual level. So we don't have religious requirements. Um, we actually do have um, all, of all the clubs and activities that we do have on campus. Habitat for Humanity is our largest student club. So I think it's a testament to um, our community life. Um, community service is really engaging. Um, we really emphasize that global citizenship. So preparing students to think about not only those big questions, but how they can kind of contribute both locally and uh, universally. Um, we've had a lot of growth in the last few years. Um, we're really climbing the ranks in terms of what programs we can offer, um, the success rates we've had in those programs, both on, um, you know, with a 99% job placement rate, as well as um, our, our high pass rates for all of those boards and NCLEX exams. Um, once students are looking to, um, move on to that next step. We are often thinking about your five and six year plan and we're also recognized um, by Forbes for um, our return on investment, really thinking about um, where students are going after their time on campus. We wanna prepare them as much as possible. Um, we've also had a really, um, a lot of physical growth on campus too. Um, we've had 14 new buildings introduced to campus in the last seven years. Um, and some of these things that are not even on this page right now, um, including uh, we just broke ground on our new Martiri ice hockey arena, which will be completed in 2023. We just broke ground this past fall and that's going to just help amplify um, opportunities for our ice hockey programs, both varsity and club. Um, a couple other updates that I do have, we have a brand new music major, which is exciting. So music has been a part of um, Sacred Hearts um, Foundation, um, but we wanted to make it a full on major, um, allowing students both composition and theory opportunities. And it's going to um, be sort of the track for students who wanna consider a musical therapy program, which we're gonna also uh, start offering in the next cycle. Um, we also added a women's wrestling program and we're one of five um, division one programs to have a female head coach. So it's a really exciting time on campus and really seeing um, those opportunities um, flourish for students. This is an overview of our application process. So uh, we are on the common application. We are test optional for all of our programs, including our direct entry nursing track. Um, but if you wanna be considered for that, you must apply by December 15th for the College of Nursing. Um, you'll see on this screen the, the range of scores that are we kind of consider for whether it's applying to the university or for the College of Nursing. I would say if you're at or above those, um, those ranges, I would consider send, sending them just because students can be considered for additional scholarship. Um, um, we will take self-reported scores as well. Um, demonstrated interest is also a really big part of our application process. So if you are um, finding Sacred Heart to be an interest and you're a rising senior, I would encourage you to reach out to me for an interview or if you have the opportunity to visit campus, we are open for visits. Um, students automatically who are admitted are automatically considered for merit scholarships and 93% of our students do receive financial aid. So. Um, thank you so much for your time. If you have any follow-up questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I look forward to working with all of you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, next, we will have the University of Connecticut. Thanks so much, Christy. Hi, everybody. My name is Heather Schreng. I'm the admissions officer for the University of Connecticut um, in Northern California, as well as Washington and Oregon. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, so at UConn, we like to say on to bigger ideas, on to better answers, it's on finding innovation, innovative ideas um, or and creative solutions to problems. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. 
So first, I'd just like to start with where exactly we're located. Um, we are in Connecticut, of course, uh, but we're located in Stores, Connecticut. That's where the main campus is. So we have um, just over 19,000 undergraduate students on our main campus. We are the flagship university in the state of Connecticut. We're about an hour and a half south of Boston and about two and a half hours north of New York City. Um, so that really puts you right in the heart of New England and allows you access to a lot of different things. We are also an R1 research institution. So that's gonna be really important for any students that might be interested in research opportunities. You can get involved as early as your freshman year if you are interested in that. Um, you can even get funded to do your own research. So definitely keep that in mind if that um, holds of any interest to you. Um, this is just to give you a you know, little idea of what campus looks like. Um, it's beautiful. We uh, have our downtown area, which is in the top middle photo you see there, um, which is a great place for students to just sort of hang out, coffee shops, restaurants, things like that. Um, there's a bookstore, um, there's coffee shops, there's a pharmacy, um, grocery store. So all of that is accessible right from campus. So moving into academics, we do have over 115 majors at UConn as well as over 320 minors and concentrations across our 10 schools and colleges. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to find the right fit for you if you don't know what you'd like to study yet, but also to um, if you have an idea of what you're interested in, but maybe you're interested in a couple of different things, you could certainly look to uh, study multiple things, but whether that's in the form of a double major, a major minor, or even a concentration as well. Um, so certainly don't feel limited at UConn by the options we have since we have quite a few. We also do have a 16 to one student to faculty ratio, which is just important because um, that is going to be, that is gonna mean smaller classes for you. And it's also gonna mean access to your professors. Um, some of our more popular majors at UConn are engineering, business, nursing, medicine. Our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is our largest college on campus as far as number of enrolled students. But our two largest majors on campus are biological sciences and psychological sciences. Um, so there is definitely a focus on a lot of STEM, but we also have our School of Fine Arts, which is extremely popular, extremely reputable. Um, so there's you kind of get a little bit of everything. We are a division one university. So we have 21 NCAA division one athletic teams. Uh, with that comes a lot of school pride. So um, students are very proud to be Huskies, part of UConn nation, a lot of hype and a lot of excitement around a lot of our sporting events. We're most known for basketball, especially women's basketball. So if you follow along with that, you might have heard of us. Um, we also have 37 club sport teams, which is comprised of about 1500 club sport athletes. So. Uh, there is certainly the opportunity there if you're interested in a sport or play a sport now, but you're either don't want to be at the division one level or aren't at that division one level, you can still play and be involved. We also have over 700 clubs and organizations on campus. So if you have any special interests that you'd like to get involved with, you can do that. We have Greek life, we have academic related clubs and organizations, as well as just special interests. So these are the next two slides are just some images to give you a little bit of an idea of what campus is like. Um, so these are some traditions that we have on campus. One of my personal favorites is Oozeball, which is the nation's largest mud volleyball tournament that takes place right on campus every single spring. Usually three to 4,000 students are participating in that. Uh, we also do the Uconic Music Festival, Convocation, um, Husky Thon, which is an 18 hour dance marathon. So there's always something going on and there's always something for you to find that you can do. Student life is very active, very vibrant. Uh, we do food truck festivals. Again, there's some images from the Uconic Music Festival, um, field days, things like that. There's, there's academic opportunities as well in the form of TED Talks or different speakers that come to campus. So you can find anything that you might be interested in to do right on campus. Uh, as far as the application process, we are on the Common App as well as the Coalition App, so uh, very accessible for you. We do utilize the SRAR or the Self-Reported Academic Record, which we would verify with your official transcript once you decide to come to UConn. Your personal essay, letters of recommendation, which are optional, um, and then we are a test optional institution. So, and that's the case for any of our more selective programs um, or for example, like our special program in medicine. Um, that's also the case for any consideration for merit scholarship and honors. 
students are automatically considered for merit and honors when they apply to the university. So there's no additional application that is required. Um, if you receive that, if you receive a merit scholarship, you will be eligible to maintain that all four years as long as you maintain the academic standards that are set forth to you by the university. Um, and the honors program is great. If you are interested, uh, we take about 525 to 550 students into that program every year. Um, and it is also a program that if you were not admitted in your first year, you could apply in your second or your third. And then as far as deadlines, we do not have early action or early decision at UConn, uh, but we do have a priority consideration deadline of December 1st, which is priority consideration for merit scholarship and for um, honors consideration. It's also the mandatory deadline for any of our special programs, which are listed there, but they are medicine, dental medicine, law, and education. January 15th is the uh, final deadline when everything must be submitted. And then March 1st is when all admissions decisions are going to be released. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. I will drop my contact information into the chat, but certainly feel free to ask any questions if any of this interests you. Thank you so much. Um, our next presentation will be from the University of New Hampshire, of New Haven, I'm sorry. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, Christy. Uh, my name is Josh Keir, one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions here at the University of New Haven. Um, I'm very excited you're joining us tonight. Um, I'm actually from the West Coast as well, uh, but an alumni of the University of New Haven. So I will go ahead and get started. There's a lot of reasons why students choose the University of New Haven. Um, maybe it's that Princeton Review ranking that you see up on the screen of the top 387 schools. Um, what's more important than that though is they rank different college offices across university campuses. And our Career Development Center was actually ranked very, very highly. So preparing our students for success after they graduate, uh, whether that be resume workshops, cover letter writing, mock interviews, really to prepare our students. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see our University of New Haven Centennial logo. So 100 years of success at the University of New Haven. And with that, we actually opened up our brand new Burgamy Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation. So state-of-the-art labs and classrooms. Um, you can see the center picture is our eSports arena. We call it the stable. So we have a bachelor's degree in eSports, which is really cool. Um, you can see the brand new communication studio that's up on top as well. And just a really uh, a, a large open space for students to come together regardless of their major. Now, in terms of our location, we're located in West Haven, Connecticut. Um, it's pretty residential, but there's lots going on right around campus, uh, whether it be one of the largest malls in Connecticut, just a couple miles down the road. Um, you also have the city of New Haven. Um, it, it is a college town. There's five universities located right in downtown New Haven. Um, so, you, so you do get that college vibe. New Haven is known for pizza around the world. So um, you can definitely do one of the, the pizza tours that we have, uh, try all the different amazing spots in New Haven. And then we're also centrally located between two major cities, Boston and New York, both easily accessible um, via the train, the bus, what have you, um, to get to those, those big cities. We have professionals and students commuting um, to those cities for, for work, for internships, um, so lots in terms of our location. Now we're technically a small to medium sized university with over 5,000 students, and we have over 100 different academic majors to choose from. So a lot of different options in terms of um, an academic major with us at the university. We also have over 85 minors and certificates if you wanted to add something to your undergraduate degree, and over 35 graduate programs um, if you wanted to continue with your master's. And we offer a ton of dual degree programs uh, to get that master's degree in a shorter time than you normally would that six year period. Now our average class size is only 20, so pretty small class sizes. And we have over 150 different clubs and organizations for our students to get involved with. But we wanna make sure you're maximizing your time and investment at the University of New Haven. 95% of our graduates from 2019 were employed or in graduate school within six months after graduating. We have those 50 plus dual degree programs to get you that master's degree to start earning more money uh, when you come out of school. And our Career Development Center posted over 2000 um, job and internship opportunities for our students to take advantage of um, at the university. Now who kind of makes up the Charger family? Um, you can see that almost 30% um, are self-identify as an underrepresented group. 40% of the class of 2025 are first generation students. 65% are residential, uh, but that's for the second, third, and fourth year. About 90% of our first year students like to live on campus. 40% from the state of Connecticut, meaning the majority come from out of state. 
and 41 United States represented on our campus in 55 foreign countries. So we're an extremely diverse campus as well. Now up on the screen, you're gonna see our five colleges that our 100 plus programs break into, whether it be arts and sciences, business, our Henry C. Lee College of Criminal Justice and Forensic Sciences, our Tagliatella College of Engineering, as well as our School of Health Sciences. Now internships are really important at the University of New Haven. About 85% of our majors actually require one to graduate. And they do span all five of those colleges you just saw. So whether it be you're in the School of Health Sciences, Engineering, um, the Lee Institute, you're gonna have an opportunity to get out of the University of New Haven and practice with an internship. Now we also have a ton of study abroad programs to choose from, over a hundred. Um, whether that be semester long, year long, two week sessions, uh, but we also have a University of New Haven Grotto campus where you can spend an entire semester for the same price as you would uh, being a residential student in West Haven, which is pretty cool. So a lot of opportunities to study abroad. Now our students are really involved on campus. Now, whether that be professional organizations, special interest groups, uh, Greek life, um, there's just so many different ways, again, 150 plus organizations to get involved with. In terms of athletics, we're an NCAA Division II school in the Northeast 10. Uh, we have 18 varsity sports that you can see up on the screen. We also have a ton of club sports, men's, women's, and co-ed club sports. Um, you can see um, 18 different club sports too to get involved with. Now, in terms of the application process, this is what we require from you. You'll see the letter of recommendation, transcripts. Um, we are ACT, SAT optional for all of our programs this year. Um, and you'll see we are a common app school as well. So it makes it relatively easy to apply. Now these are the four ways to apply to the University of New Haven. Two forms of early decision, that binding form of admission. Uh, you can see the deadlines there to apply. Most students like to apply that early action where um, it's non-binding. You can, you can interview if you want but you still can um, submit other applications and, and get those acceptances. So um, those are the four ways to apply to the university. And we also offer a ton of different scholarships to offset that cost of tuition. Um, the merit-based scholarships, so based on GPA and test scores, range from ten dollars to $28,000 a year, um, and you're automatically considered when you apply. And you'll see some of those additional scholarships up on the screen too. I just want to say thank you um, for letting me present. I will throw my uh, contact information in the chat. I am the West Coast Counselor, um, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now we'll have our next presenter from the University of Delaware. Thanks, Christy, and thanks to all my other colleagues here. And I appreciate your time today. I'm going to give you six minutes on the University of Delaware. And here we go. I want to uh, first let you know that my name is Chuck Lidiard with the University of Delaware. I'm based in Long Beach, California. I've worked there for eight years now. And if you are at all interested in getting our mailing list, feel free to use your um, smartphone and use the QR code to get on our mailing list. But the first conversation I generally have with students and families and parents about the University of Delaware is our location. A lot of times they can't pinpoint exactly where Newark, Delaware is. We are essentially located in the Mid-Atlantic and are really in between four major East Coast cities. The closest being Philadelphia, which is a 45 minute drive away, but being located right off the interstate I-95, which goes from all the way from Maine to Florida, and being on the Amtrak and SEPTA commuter train line, we are very conveniently located uh, and are in a college town that is just screaming an East Coast classic. Uh, there's a lot of that Georgian architecture, red bricks, white columns, and Newark, Delaware has about 35,000 residents. And you add on to that, we have 18,000 undergraduates. It's this really vibrant college town that a lot of people are looking for when they're looking in the Mid-Atlantic. We are a tier one research school. Uh, we have division one sports, a vibrant Greek life as well. And one thing that's unique about our 18,000 undergraduates, for being a public flagship university, 70% of our undergraduates are not from the state of Delaware. They're predominantly based Chicago based East, but I've been with Delaware for eight years now, and I've seen year in and year out our West Coast present grow, especially last year. One thing that sets us apart is we're not just this great college, but in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do. I mentioned it being a very good college town, but in the middle of our quad called the green, we have this really vibrant main street that intersects our campus that has 70 different unique boutiques, restaurants, and shops that are available for our students to spread out and enjoy our college town. 
There's no sales tax in Delaware, so that's always great. Uh, but if you're in Northern California, I would equate this to Walnut Creek, the main street that's there. And in Southern California, I always talk about Chapman University and Orange or Pasadena. Uh, it kind of has that feel there. Being a flagship institution, we have over 150 different majors that you can directly apply into any of them. Over 100 different minors and 50 four plus one programs that allow students to earn an accelerated master's program as well. 20% of our students are coming in each year as university study students, meaning they have multiple interests and they just wanna wait and come take our liberal arts curriculum and then figure things out uh, once they get there. Most students, uh, before I meet them, know us a lot for engineering, specifically chemical and biomedical engineering. We have a lot of big corporate partnerships like Dow, DuPont, uh, Gore that are in our backyard. Um, we also are very big with business though too. Uh, we're not just a health science and um, an engineering school. Business is big. We have JP Morgan Chase and a lot of other Fortune 500 companies in our backyard. But we're a liberal arts college, like I mentioned, psychology is big, education, linguistics. We're one of four programs as an art conservation as an undergraduate and graduate program at Delaware. So you can definitely find a lot of different things at Delaware. If you're interested in a more uh, unique collaborative community that's a little bit smaller than the 4,300 first year students we bring in each year, the Honors College pulls together 600 students that just covets the seminar-like discussion classes uh, who really want to perhaps double major or maybe are interested in medical school and they want that extra advising, uh, not only from our Honors College advisors, but also have unique opportunities for research or travel abroad. Mm -hmm. Good news this year is you don't even have to submit a, an additional essay like you had in the past. You just check a box on the application that you're interested and you will definitely be uh, considered just by applying. In addition to the Honors College, we have many other different scholars and fellows programs that definitely makes the community at the University of Delaware a little bit smaller. Many of them feature living learning communities where beginning your first semester, you're able to live with others that share similar interests, but maybe you're not devoting a full major or minor to that interest. You see a picture here of our climate scholars because we have a wonderful marine biology and oceanography program. So maybe you have an interest in perhaps an entrepreneur endeavor that maybe is featuring a way to save our oceans or save our climate and you just wanna be engaged with other like-minded individuals. So if you're admitted to Delaware, and if your major allows you to apply to a Scholars of Fellows program, you'll be notified after admission and you can apply through your My Blue End portal. Other popular ones include cybersecurity, the climate scholars, like I mentioned, but also our community engagement scholars, Delaware Innovation Fellows for entrepreneurs and so on. We were the very first college to do study abroad in the United States in 1923. So we've been doing it nearly for a hundred years and we have over a hundred programs in nearly 50 countries already set up. Uh, most of our students do travel abroad, whether it be a full semester in the spring, fall, or we have a really great six and a half to seven week winter break as well that allows our students to take micro study abroad trips too. These are ways to apply, the steps to apply. We do require the self-reported academic record. So I'll give you my contact information if you have any issues with that. I have some great YouTube videos there, but no preference, coalition or common application. And you just need to do the required prompt essay on either of those platforms. We are test optional from through 2023 through it for admissions and merit-based scholarship. And your counselor needs to submit a letter or the secondary school report. Early actions, November 1st, priority deadline is January 15th for scholarship and financial aid. My last slide is just going to showcase the Diamond Challenge. We host the number one ranked entrepreneurship competition in the United States. It's open up for all students. You don't have to be considering Delaware. Just go to diamondchallenge.org if you're interested and take a screenshot. This is how you can contact me. Here's a QR code. I'll put it in the chat as well. But thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you to everyone that presented tonight. We will now move into our Q&A uh, section. And if you would like to turn your camera on, that would be great. And I will go ahead and get started with our first question for tonight. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll just go in the order of the presentations. 
start. Uh, I think one piece of advice is uh, I think it'd be really easy to compare yourself to your peers and or see what they're doing, what schools they're applying to, um, the, the topics they're writing about. So just keep in mind this is your process. It's your time to be selfish in a, in a good way um, and try to filter out any sort of like peer pressure or negative energy that you may be feeling that I definitely felt in high school. Um, I would say that it's very easy to get bogged down in all the facts and the stats um, that we are all throwing at you and that you're sort of looking at online. Um, but my best advice is to keep in mind that you want to find an environment where you feel inspired that will help you reach excellence. Um, and you want to find a community where you feel comfortable because that's going to help you reach your full potential. Yeah, so my um, my piece of advice would be a little twofold. Um, first, I would kind of bookending the start and end of the admissions process. So my first piece of advice is to create a separate email specifically for college admissions, communications, anything that you, important that you want to get and have it be something as simple as um, something so so and so's college search 2022 at gmail because you're going to get a lot of information it's all important but it's also going to help so you don't have to actually bombard your own personal inbox and then as you're navigating the process and you're finalizing your list um, I would say if you're no longer interested in a school, just uh, simply opt out, let us know. You can see that we are humans on the other side. It's not all automated. So um, please do us the due diligence and let us know um, what your plans are. It's all about fit at the end of the, end of the day. And we wanna make sure that um, you know, we're, we're sending our resources out to those kids who are interested. I would say my piece of advice um, is don't be afraid of admissions counselors. <laughs> um, we are here to help and we want to help. So don't be afraid to ask questions or just send us an email, even if it's not to ask a question, just to say hi and, and check in because it's always really great when we do get a chance to connect with a student before reading their application. And then when we're reading their application, to be able to say, oh, I remember talking with that student, even if it was just via via email. So um, don't be afraid to, to connect and reach out. And we are a great resource for you. We have a wealth of information. Um, even if it's just about the admissions process as a whole, we're certainly happy to help with that. I'd say my piece of advice is, along with all my colleagues, is to make sure you're, you're obviously finding a school that you has a major that you want, but that you can visit, whether it be in person or virtual. Um, to make sure that it, that it feels right, that you're going to be happy there for the next four plus years if you continue on. So just making sure you're finding a place that has your major and, and that you're going to be happy at um, to make it the best college experience for you. I haven't decided if going last is better or worse just because our colleagues just delivered great, great advice and knowledge. The thing I would think about, especially for seniors, as you're coming up into the fall, there's a lot of holidays, Thanksgiving, you know, where you might be getting together with maybe friends that have gone through the process or family. You're going to get a lot of advice everywhere. Uh, so definitely I'm not saying to, uh, avoid it, but just know that this is your process. And if someone says you need to check out this school, it's fantastic. Yes, maybe look at it, but understand what you want out of your college experience. What are your core values that you're bringing in as you build a list around your academic curriculum uh, interests and also your academic transcript and what you bring to the table? Because just because the college is right for your friend and your uncle, your mom, your dad doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be right for you because you're not the same person. So just keep that in mind. Take some time to think about what's really important to you about your four year experience and use that as kind of uh, I call them the four pillars or your guiding light uh, when you're deciding which schools you're going to invest your time and either your your parents money into this process, because you should want to go to any of the college you apply to if they say yes. Thank you. And my next question, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? I'll try to go, I think it's an, an easy attention grabbing one, but I mentioned the red doors. Uh, it's easy for me to remember. I, mean, I just started at Muhlenberg and I think what the red doors symbolize, it's a welcoming community, doors are always open, faculty and staff and the other students are uh, just really happy to be a part of this inclusive and welcoming community. So just remember bright red doors and also bright red chairs everywhere. There's like, like lawn chairs all over campus and they're also bright red, so. 
Um, I would say for Salve, uh, both Salve Regina's campus as well as Newport is a place of incredible history um, and a lot of uh, beauty and pride. Um, and it's a place that delivers a transformational experience to our students. Um, we were even rated number 18 in the nation for that. Um, and it's so important to have that very fulfilling experience both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, and that's something that you would find in our community at Salve. Um, one thing I'd like to reiterate, and maybe it's also a little extension of advice is, um, while we are a Catholic institution, um, we don't, as I said, we don't have those religious requirements for students. So if you are looking at, you know, any faith-based institutions, it's always good to ask those questions of what that expectation is, um, just because you might be surprised at what, um, what the community might be like or how they um, handle their, um, you know, their relationship with the religion or spirituality in a sense. Um, and that just, uh, again, a testament to our, our own community is how much they are involved in service. Um, we are just under 6,000 undergraduate students and virtually everyone is involved in some type of service at the local and global level. And we've had, we have over a hundred partnerships um, for service opportunities um, in those areas. So um, just something to consider as you're looking at that college service. I would say um, I would want students to remember or keep in mind the boundless opportunities that are available to them at UConn. Um, so that it takes shape in the form of academics, of course, but also personally, the personal growth that you'll experience here um, through different opportunities, whether it's studying abroad or getting involved in community service or joining clubs or organizations, the people that you'll meet. Um, we have so much to offer um, on both the academic and the social side of things. Um, so definitely something for, for students to keep in mind um, during their college search. Mine's very similar to Heather's. Um, I just wanted to talk about, uh, reiterate um, the opportunities for our students, whether that be the, the 100 plus majors to get involved with. Um, the required internships that almost all of our majors we have to do in order to graduate, the clubs and the organizations. Um, it's just so easy to get involved and it's a great way to, to, to build on top of your academics while you're at the University of New England. So, thanks. I guess the thing I would like everyone to consider is a lot of times working and living here in California, I work with families and students and they feel they must stay in the state because that's where they wanna actually stay after they graduate and work. And I can't blame you, I've lived here for 10 years, but you have six great institutions here that yes, uh, it's on the other side of the country. It, it is some, you know, it's a different climate, but you know, there's gonna be a lot of opportunities here in California. We have the sixth largest economy in the world. We value your, the unique experiences, employers value the unique experience you can get. And so I think if you could just kind of ask yourself what you wanna get out of your, you know, for your experience and just be adventurous, consider going out of state if, or have a few on your list, just because we all have unique opportunities. Like at Delaware, you can double major and still graduate in four years. You can work directly with professors. You have wonderful internship opportunities, study abroad, and then you have the opportunity to come back. Trust me, you will be allowed. And so just kind of keep that in mind that where we do have great state options here in this in California, um, many of them are large campuses. You know, I think I might be the largest school here, maybe Connecticut. Yeah, so I mean, just keep that in mind that the state schools are definitely great and that, you know, but you have other options that could be similar and have a different experience and then come back afterwards. So um, thank you all for the information and thank you for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a very quick five minute survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide and we encourage you to check back um, to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the session recordings at strivescan.com or slash W-A-C-A-C. Thank you. Good night.